Welcome everybody. Today we're going to talk about the EHME uh, as we have here set up in our lab. So uh, there's a couple things that are different about uh, this, uh, this new product here. Uh, we can see that it is a controller that is um, uh, mounted on top of the motor. Uh, the controller is replaceable. The motor is a permanent magnet motor. So uh, a little bit different than uh, uh, what most of us are, are used to, uh, but the permanent magnet motor is a very high efficient uh, motor. So high efficiency on your permanent magnet motors. And in this scenario here, uh, it's a horizontal uh, booster system, and we can see that it's set up to the uh, uh, EHM uh, style pump. So in this scenario, we have this EHME, again, a, a package system, and uh, we are lifting water. Uh, most of the time, uh, your scenario is probably not going to be uh, a lift scenario. It's probably just going to be a, a flooded suction, some sort of uh, positive pressure uh, on the suction side. Um, but we can cl clearly see here that, uh, you know, if you have a lift scenario, um, this does have some lift capability to it. Uh, so uh, this, this system here, this package, again, the controller sits on top of the motor. Uh, the pressure transducer is, is hooked up and, and comes with a system. One thing to note uh, in your above, uh, above ground uh, systems, surface mount systems, is um, we do recommend that you install a check valve on the discharge. So it might sound a little strange. Um, uh, certainly, we have one on the suction here. Uh, we have a foot valve on the suction. But on the discharge, uh, that is typically recommended um, with a booster system like this, uh, surface mount, and, um, and also a tank. You can see we have the tank in the system. So typical setup, tank, uh, check valve on the discharge, pressure transducer, uh, gauge. The purpose of the check valve is so that it gives you a nice positive stop and basically helps the system uh, turn off. Let's take a look at the terminal strip and we've loosened the four screws on the cover. So let's take that off. And now let's look at the terminal strip from left to right. And starting uh, left to right here, you can see terminal number one is your ground. And number two is the input power going in, number two and three, so you have line in and neutral. So that's, that's power going into your drive. Next is four and five. So four and five is a relay. So a relay is an output that does not provide power. So in this case here, we're not uh, connecting anything to the relay four and five. Number six is a 15 volt power supply when needed. Number seven and eight are your analog inputs. Number nine and 10, you can see here we're connected to nine and 10, and that is our transducer. So we have a four to 20 milliamp, 300 PSI transducer that comes with a unit. And we can see here we're connected to terminal nine for the brown and terminal 10 for the white. Next, let's move over to number 11 and 12. We can see that both 11 and 12 and 13 and 14 have jumpers already installed. So 11 and 12 is your start stop. And in this case, we don't have an external start stop switch or anything. So we're just going to leave the jumper in and uh, closed with the jumper means run. Number 13 and 14, we can also see that that has a jumper, and that's for a low water switch if you want to add one. And again, that is normally closed. And if you want to add a device, uh, open would be off. Moving on to terminals 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, these are for your RS-485 terminals, which are used for communication uh, and multi-pump hookup. So today we're going to focus on a single pump system 
But just note that with this unit, you can hook up to three different, uh, up to three units together in a multi-pump operation. One advantage to this type of package system is that there's very little setup. And so let's take a look at the uh, user interface here on this EHME. So there's not a lot of buttons. There's a main menu button, which is for your start and stop. And also that's how we get into our parameters if and when we do want to make some changes. And you can see uh, a negative and a positive uh, to make those changes. And we can see here that the system is stopped. Up here we have bar and PSI, and uh, certainly um, wherever your, um, whatever country you're from, uh, you're going to want to look at pressure in bar or pounds per square inch. And then the top here is RPM times 10. And we can see here we're stopped. So I'm going to hit the menu button just to turn it on, crack open the valve. And we can see here we're reading PSI. So we have a set pressure, uh, looks like uh, approximately 40 PSI. So our system is maintaining the 40 PSI because we've got our transducer hooked up. Um, so 40 PSI, we can also see along the top here um, some speed reference. So I can manually uh, turn it off with that button just by pressing the button. I'm going to turn it back on again. Again, it defaults to reading uh, PSI. If you want to see RPM on the digital display here, I'm going to press the menu and the plus button and momentarily we can see here that it's showing RPM times 10. So 3118 for an example times 10, uh, but it does automatically go back to PSI. So we'll just do that one more time. Uh, the menu in the plus, and this is showing RPM times 10. And again, it will just go back to showing PSI back to the default. Let's get it going again. And let's change the pressure. So the pressure does not have to be done uh, into the parameter, into the menus, the parameters, uh, which we'll get into next. To simply adjust your pressure up and down. And that is your negative and plus buttons. So no, um, don't have to get into the menu, don't have to get into the parameters. Just hit the plus and minus button and that's changing your set pressure. Okay, so now let's get into the, the parameters. We, you can see how easy it is to increase and decrease your set pressure without the parameters, without the menu. Uh, just simply hit your negative and your positive to change your set pressure. Let's go into the parameters now, and that is a long press on your menu button we can see here that it's coming up to P20. P20 is the password, so it's asking for a password. So I'm going to hit the menu button and then go to 66, which seems to be the default uh, password for a lot of drives. So let me go to 66, hit the menu button, and see how that's allowed me to go into the rest of the parameters. The first time we powered this up, it's asking for a password, P20. We put our 66 in there, and we just went back through the, the minus button, and let's just start with P1. So P1 is your set pressure, and in the manual it tells you that your P1 is a 
uh, view only. So that, that's just, uh, you cannot change it. Uh, we just showed how to change that. Uh, but if you do want to know what it is, that's what P1 is for. So that's your set pressure in 39, for an example. So you just hit the menu button to go through your parameters. You know, P2, again, another, that's effective required value. P4 is auto start. And most of the time, you're probably going to want the auto start. And we can see auto start is on. So again, those are just view only. So P05, uh, again, view only, that's operating time in months. So we're just going to go through some of those view only and uh, skip sort of through those. So uh, operating time, P06 would be operating time in hours. P07 is motor time in months. P08, motor time in hours. And now we get into the errors. Again, view only. So P09 would be your first error. So P10 would be your second error. And then it goes all the way to P12, and that would be your fourth error. So you can also see things like P13, power module temperature, P14, inverter current, P15, inverter voltage, P16, motor speed, and P17 would be the software. Let's just say you happen to be on P17. You want to go back to P1, so hit your minus button. And let's go to P1. And again, the book will tell you uh, P1 is required value. What is that? That's your set pressure. And we can see here set pressure is 39 PSI. Again, these are view only. PO2, effective required value. PO3. Regulation restart value. So this one is, can be a little tricky, but your PO3 is your restart value in percentage of your set point. So for an example, let's say that we want to run 50 PSI and we want it to turn on at 45, wake back up at 45, your restart value. Well, because this is in terms of percentage, I would want to change this to 90. So 90% 90 of 50 is 45. So just keep that in mind. This is in percentage of your restart value. So I changed that to 90. And so I hit the menu button to save it. And let's take a look at a couple more. Uh, PO4 is your auto start. And let's see where it's set. It's set to on. In other words, it's going to start, start back up again uh, when, when necessary. So that's the default. If you want to change it, PO4, you would just change that to off and then hit the menu button. But I'm going to leave it in on. And again, menu button saves and goes to the next parameter. And there's a bunch of other parameters that have to do with operating time in months, in hours, uh, in errors. And, uh, but we're going to skip forward a little bit here. Okay, let's go to P25. P25 is your control modes. And there's several different modes uh, for this device. And uh, let's just talk about those modes when we get to P25. So I'm just going to hit the plus button. You can press and hold. So I'm right here to P25 and I'm going to hit the menu button to see where I'm at. It shows an HCS. HCS is Hydrovar Controller Single. So in other words, this is set up for a single pump as opposed to multi-pump. 
right? So for this particular system here, uh, that's exactly where I want to be. Now let's look at some options here. So if I hit the plus button, I can see NSE or MSE. So MSE is one of the multi-pump modes and that's serial cascade. Serial cascade is where the last pump in the system varies the speed to maintain the set pressure. What else do we have? I know it looks like an M, but, uh, or an N, but it actually it's an N. So the next one is MSY, another multi-pump mode, and this one is synchronous. Synchronous means that when, uh, let's just say in a duplex, your second pump is called to run, then both pumps uh, operate at the same frequency, so they're synchronized. And the last mode here is an actuator mode, and that is ACT. The actuator mode is speed control. So we can do that in one of two ways. We can send a signal into the drive, or we can just do it manually and run at the speed we want based on the user interface. So ACT is actuator mode, that's speed control. We want to set this back to HCS, that's single pump. And so I just want to make sure, hit the menu button to save it. And uh, so we go back into the single pump mode. Let's say that you're in the parameter mode, you wanted to change something. Again, remember your set pressure can be done with the plus and minus on the keypad. You do not have to go into the parameters. But if you're into that parameter view and you want to get out, you just press and hold. That's a long press and hold, and it takes you out of the parameter uh, mode. So we can see here now we're, we're stopped. So let's go ahead and start this pump. So now it's on, it's on automatic. So uh, the default is, again, showing pressure and some indication of speed, RPM times 10 on the outside. And if we want to show frequency here, speed, menu plus, and now this display is showing our speed, which is RPM times 10. So 3190, 3200 for an example. And then it just goes back to PSI. So let's just close the valve. And so we've got a simple system here where we, we want to run constant pressure. Uh, it is a lift uh, situation, so we're lifting from a tank, but we want constant pressure, constant 40 PSI on the output. And uh, we're just gonna close the valve, close the discharge valve. And what we can see is the pump uh, ramping down to its min speed, uh, which can be altered and it turns off just like a typical booster system with a transducer. So thanks for watching everybody and learning a little bit about our new EHME. So we're, we're pretty excited about this, uh, this uh, package system. And you think about the E, uh, it is uh, energy efficient, certainly with that permanent magnet motor and the drive. And, and also it's very easy, very easy to set up, not a lot of uh, programming, not a lot of setup, and um, don't even need to get into the parameters uh, to set your pressure. So if you want additional information, contact goulds.com or give us a call.